Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. This video is for you if you are new to photography and you're in the market for a good camera and you're trying to find a camera that will give you really good results but without breaking the bank. The Nikon D700, I believe, is such a camera. And with this series of videos, this is the second that I'm making, I hope to bring you a bit closer to what it is to own a Nikon D700, uh, maybe before you make uh, the purchase decision. So the first video that I made, I uh, did my sort of my shopping list where I had 10 pros and 10 cons and many have pointed to the fact that they were, that there was a flawed list, but I still made my decision based on that list. The second part of that video was the unboxing because as you know, the, the guest sees in an hour more than what the, the host sees in a year. So I wanted to give you my immediate reaction. Again, I'm trying to bring you as close to the D700 as I possibly can. This video, I have finally, yoohoo, been shooting with the D700 for the first couple of weeks and I have been using the lens that you see here, the Nikkor, the Nifty 50, uh, 1.2 lens, a fantastic lens that uh, I can only recommend. I think these two suit each other very, very well. I had some concerns when I bought the D700 and uh, I'm trying to address those concerns uh, in this video. And I had more or less four questions. First question was, this is only a 12 megapixel camera. So, you know, will it be a big drop when I come from 24 or even I believe 42? Can you really make good pictures with a 12 megapixel uh, sensor? My second question was that I had read a lot about the magic about the Nikon D700, that it makes the pictures pop, that it stands out, that the pictures are exceptional. And uh, I really wanted to see for myself if that was the case. My third question was related to landscape because I do a lot of landscape uh, photography. So I specifically dive into that and show you some landscape pictures and how the camera is doing. Finally, I couldn't help it. I had to compare the D750 and the D700 just to see what what does the, 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 the higher resolution sensor do? What does a more modern camera, the D750, do in, in com competition, you can say, with the D700? Just one picture I'm showing you to compare. And uh, the point with that is that, of course, the D700 is somewhat older and much cheaper. So... The, the thinking with doing that was to show you, you can see what is it that you would be missing if you go for D700 instead of a D750. I hope all that made sense. If you want to see the documentation of all the answers to these four questions, that will follow right now. Uh, if you just want to skip all that and go to the conclusions I'm writing somewhere here below where you need to fast forward to. So I will see you on the other side. So let's start out with the pixel count. You can see this is a little moody picture that I took the other day. And uh, the bottom part here is actually the reflection up in the top you have the, the branch as such. What I think is impressive here is that if I push the R button here in Lightroom, you can see how little a part of the picture that I've actually used. The rest is, uh, has been taken out. And uh, I still think I don't miss any resolution. Second flower picture here is uh, maybe not a prize winning picture. But again, if you see how little of the picture have you used, all of this has been cut away uh, to give you this picture, right? So I think that there is, for most use, uh, plenty of uh, pixel count in a 12 megapixel camera. Second up is the 3D effect and uh, the first example here where I think uh, there is a good effect in the picture here in terms of depth is the, these clouds over the water where you can see that uh, there is a good 3D feel to, to this picture as far as I can tell. This is perhaps where I noticed is the most these clouds here to the left. They almost seem like they are cut out and put in front of the other clouds uh, further back. So I think the camera is doing really well here. Also here you can see here these clouds here. I think there is a very good 3D effect or pop or whatever you want to call it. If I take my body here, my cat, um, and combine the two, I would say that again, I don't seem to miss anything in terms of resolution. And also I think there's a very good separation. Of course, it helped 
a lot with uh, you know lots of bokeh and also that he's backlit that also helps also but uh, i think in general that there's a very good separation here uh, there's a little bit of purple here but i think this has more to do with the lens and could probably be corrected these three people here on their way into the water i think again you have a very good sense of the dimensions and and uh, the depth in the picture here so i think the d700 does well on that account now this picture i also think is very good in terms of pop or 3d effects i really like the way the clouds here they stand out i also like this little brown stone here the wet stone here i think it really stands out in a nice way so i see a lot of 3d pop or 3d effect here the only thing is that I want to point to your attention if you look to the top left here you can see this picture is actually not shot with the d700 but it's shot with a sony r7 mark ii so i think you can find other cameras that can do what the d700 does in terms of pop and uh, 3d effect so i don't think it's unique to the d700 it, the d700 does it well but it's you can find it elsewhere but mind you that this camera here is much more expensive than the d700 finally the landscape pictures how is it doing i have shown you some landscape pictures so i think you already now can see that i'm or guess that i'm i'm positively biased here this is a picture of a painter doing all these red flowers here, uh, putting those into his, his painting here. Peter Witt is his name. He's a Danish landscape uh, painter, and he was kind enough to let me take this picture. I think, again, you have a very good sense of the depth here, and I think also the color rendition here with the red flowers is, is amazing. Moving on to... Another picture here from the Danish Museum, uh, Louisiana, where, you know, this, this is actually Sweden, you see here on the other side of the, of the water. But I also think there's a nice feeling of depth here. The, the, the plant here stands out pretty well uh, towards the, the more green. This has a more yellow feel to it, but I think uh, there's a really good it's a really good landscape uh, camera, the D700. Moving on here to a little house that I often pass, where you can see, I think the chimney here especially stands out really, really well. And uh, yeah, it does really well, I think, the D700 here in terms of of producing some, some nice landscape pictures. Here you have the, the foreground that stands very, very clear as I see it, and you have the the sun over the water here in the distance and uh, again a good feeling of depth and uh, a nice landscape ca camera and towards the end here i just want to show you some pictures of the relatively still water here where i really like the way that the d700 uh, sort of captures the waves and maybe it's even better in the next picture because you have the reflection in the water here and you can see it really does a good job, I think, here in capturing uh, the waves here and how the sun is reflected in the water here. So all in all, I would say I'm, I'm really pleased with the, with the landscape capabilities of the D700. And finally, I couldn't help it. I had to see how the D700 performed in a direct comparison with the D750. So here I have two pictures both shot at the same day with one minute apart or actually a little less than that. You can see the D750 has a much more resolution here and a larger file. The D700 actually exactly half the resolution. I shot in manual mode, so no variation here. Of course, there could be a little bit of variation in ambient light, but I am pretty sure there were no clouds on the, on the sky that day, so uh, it should be pretty close to each other. And I shot with the 50 millimeter uh, 1.2 lens, and uh, I basically switched uh, the same lens from one camera to the other. So if we look at the cameras here, immediately I'm thinking that the color rendition on the D700 so here I've just 
interrupt myself and jump into Lightroom. For some reason, the Kelvin values, even though I sh shot both pictures at uh, auto white balance, the Kelvin values were set very differently so that the D700 was a uh, much lower Kelvin value. And I adjusted that so it's exactly the same. And you can see now the color rendition is much closer to each other. I would even argue the D700 is uh, maybe a tad warmer but this is much closer to how i recall uh, the scene in real life so uh, i th i'd say that there's not that much of a difference between the two cameras here if we go down to the detail here under the table and uh, let me see if i can go down here and show you a little reflection in sort of the leg here and i think this is where you can see that there is more resolution available for the D750 than there is for the D700, but certainly the D700 is, is putting up a really good fight. Also, if we go close to our little friend here, we call him Psycho Chicken because his eyes are sort of pointing in each direction. I think you can also see there's more detail and, and precision here with the D750 as you would expect, but I think the D700 is putting up a really, really good fight here. So I don't think I'm missing, you know, that much in terms of, of resolution and certainly not if you if you zoom out. And if we go and look at, let's see, there was a detail up here to the right, the house at the other side of the street. Again, here, you know, to me, these things look very, very much the same. I don't see a big difference in variation here, the wood. The piece of wood here, again, great details on both sides. A little test here, not very scientific, but you know, my immediate reaction is that I am continue to be surprised by how well the 12 megapixel puts up a fight against the 24 megapixel here to the left. Okay, thank you for watching this far. I hope you haven't fallen asleep yet, but I, I hope you saw that, that I tried to document how I had reached my conclusions. And just to sum up, First of all, my, maybe my biggest concern is the 12 megapixel sensor a problem? No, it's not. I can do even do cropping. And I think it produces some amazing pictures still uh, where the resolution is more than enough for my needs. And I mainly post on social media and I seldomly print, but I do once in a while print, but, but then it's not, you know, it's not a, a big post or anything. So I think there's plenty of resolution in the D700. My second concern, or maybe not so much concern, but I was looking forward to shooting with the D700 because I've heard so many good things about it. And I'm sorry to say that, and this is, you have to remember when I say this, this is an amateur talking, and I'm just assessing this camera, being an amateur uh, and an and enthusiast, I cannot see that there's something special with this camera. I'm sorry to say. I know so many pros and much more experienced people than me have said, you know, there is something about the D700 for various reasons. And I'm not an engineer. I have no ambition to be one. I'm just saying to you, I can't see it. And I can see other cameras that can do, if, if we're talking 3D or pop or whatever we call it, do exactly the same. They are also much more expensive, which I'll come back to that. But just mind you, my, the, the answer to my second question, is there something magic about the D700? I'm sorry, I can't see it. Probably my fault. I can feel the red uh, tomatoes or the rotten tomatoes coming flying my way. Uh, so please be gentle with the comments. But that is really where I, I am right now. I've reserved the right to grow wiser over time. But right now, this is where I am. The third question was, is this a good landscape uh, camera? And I can say it is. I think it produces some beautiful pictures. And uh, they all, I, I don't, didn't mention that in the previous part of the video, but they have a sort of a landscape uh, painting feel to them. So, that, so it really does a good job serving me as a landscape camera. Finally, uh, I couldn't help <laughs> comparing it to the D750. And I would say, if I just look at the pictures now without going zooming in and pixel peeping and all that, they seem very, very similar to me. And uh, I am, again, I must underline, I'm surprised how little downside there is, if, the, if there is any at all, to having uh, a 12 megapixel uh, sensor.
So that's that's my conclusion. This is where I am right now. This is my second video. As I said, I've only been shooting with the camera for a few weeks. I've reserved the right to grow wiser over time. It may be in a month, two months time. I will make a new video saying now I have found some cases where the D700 is extraordinary in its its uh, you know rendition of colors or skin toning or whatever it is. But where I am right now, as I said, I can't see it. Finally, I want to say thank you for all the feedback I have received. I can see that there are many of you who um, <laughs> there are many of you who look into my videos here. Many of you who own a D700 already that look into my video and say. Is he doing a proper assessment of my little baby? And apparently I'm not. Um, the, the, the pros and cons list that I made was flawed. Many have comments. And, and one of the things I forgot just to mention one was that there's only one card slot, which of course, if you're a professional or aspiring to become a professional, that could be a big issue for you. But there were many other things. I have a blog post where I have updated the pros and cons list and you can consult that if you, if you want to see if I have managed to capture all your feedback. But thank you for the feedback. I really appreciate it. It also helped me uh, grow wiser to this camera. So uh, please keep it coming. So before we wrap up, I just want to say that in terms of value proposition, I think this is probably one of the best deals you can make right now. I don't have the full overview of all cameras and maybe there's a good Canon one as well. I have no knowledge about Canon, but 325 euros, full frame camera, access to Nikon's or Nikos uh, vintage glass. You can buy cheap on eBay and Amazon. I cannot see a better and cheaper way into something that, you know, 10 years ago, this was a pro level camera. I know that the D3 was the pro version of this one, a little bit faster and so on. But this one is packed with most of the features from the D3. And it's why this one is called also a baby D3. And you get that today, you know, 10, 12 years after for 325 euros. It is an amazing deal. And you can call me a Nikon fanboy, but the sad thing is that Nikon doesn't make any money on me saying this because, you know, I'm recommending buying used gear. So there you have it. That was the first week or two with the D700. I'm sure you will let me know uh, <laughs> if, you if you disagree to what I have concluded here. Please, uh, you know, not too many Rotten Tomatoes in the comments, but I do appreciate your comments and uh, I hope you will keep them coming. I reserve the right to grow wiser over time. This is where I am right now uh, with my D700 and I plan to make more videos as uh, I progress. I think my next video would be about ergonomics and how it is to work with this camera. That is also important to many. If that has interest for you, please let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to to take your questions and see if I can answer them in the next videos about how the handling and the user interface and the shooting experience, how it is to work with this uh, one kilo baby. Otherwise, as always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye bye.